Maybe I can show you the videos later because we're sort of running out of time. But you're going to get onto the Halloween story as well. Yeah, the Halloween story. Because we should, really we should wind up in a few minutes. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So I have actual videos. You can I can show you them afterwards. Yeah. Where the system is generating, you can get it to imagine things, and you can actually see it imagining things, which is really neat. You can get it to learn walking, and so you see the system walking, and then it just start. It observes walking, and then it just you can, it can generate it. And it'll walk around your screen in a natural way. And then you can get it to move between different styles of walking. So it can, it can move between walking sexy to work, walking in a, like a John Wayne cowboy style. And, it'll, and then you can ask it to do both at the same time. And it actually <laughs> comes up with some combination of them. It's a very, very powerful generative model. And it's the same type of system which also works for recognition. You can get to recognize characters, do image recognition, all kinds of different things. I can show you those videos afterwards. So I'll just get them over. Okay, so I'm gonna try to wrap up in about a minute. So if we can build human level intelligence, um, I, I think we can almost certainly scale it up to beyond human level intelligence once we understand how to do it. Um, a machine that has well above human level intelligence will probably be able to understand its own design and design even more powerful machines. That seems pretty reasonable. We have no idea how to deal with this. We really are in the dark here. Um, now there's an institute, Singularity Institute of Artificial Intelligence, studying this problem. One of their core goals is to develop something called friendly AI, which has a very high level of safety for humanity, no matter how super intelligent it becomes. Now, they don't really know how to do that. I mean, this is, we can see this, it looks like there's probably going to be some problems or at least some serious risks here. We don't know how this is going to play out. We, this is quite risky. So, this is my Halloween scenario for you all. I think in the early 2020s we should have petaflop desktops. That is not radical. You can build a desktop machine today with a few of the latest high-end graphics cards and get 10 teraflops, right? Of SGM performance at least. Um, in 10 years we should be at petaflops. In fact, even if we slow down our current rate of progress, we'd be at 10 petaflops. So this is somewhat conservative. Um, so a petaflops oh, a is petaflops. a thousand times as fast as a teraflop. Yeah, so this is one and then 15 zeros after it, calculations is even. Okay? It's all that. Um, are we going to have powerful algorithms for deep belief networks? I think we're already getting there. I haven't shown you the videos. You can see them afterwards. They do some, do some pretty fancy stuff. And it looks like it's in the right sort of space of algorithms. It has the right sort of properties, right? And this is a, remember I said this is a key thing to reduce down the space of possibilities of reinforcement learning to make it work well. So I'll put a question mark here. I don't know how it's going to progress. Are we going to be at a point in, in the early 2020s where we can basically provide the same type of functionality that Cortex provides for an AI, AI system? We've made a lot of progress in the last 10 years. So I think we've, it looks like we're heading in that direction. Furthermore, if you've got desktop machines with a petaflop, you can make much bigger networks, but more importantly, you can test a lot more ideas. So all the students, and, I, and I'm talking about desktop machines, because all your grad students stuff get desktop machines. They don't get supercomputers. These are, these are the guys who actually drive a lot of the progress forwards. They can run a thousand times as many experiments. Well, they can run a hundred times as many experiments on a hundred things that are a hundred times as big. And so that really speeds up research. Because you don't have to wait a week to see the results anymore. You can run 10 different variations in a matter of an hour. So you can try all kinds of things. So that's, I think this is actually going to speed up this quite a lot. And we're all, we've already made, just in the last five years, there's been a lot of progress here. So I think it's possible, but I've got a question mark on there, possible that we'll have some really good temporal deep belief networks in the next 10 years. Possible. Brain reinforcement learning, that's going to be nailed. Really. We're already we're making great progress there. The people I speak to expect it's going to be pretty well understood. And we even know better algorithms than the ones that the brain appears to be using. Because we can just take a matrix and invert it. And the brain finds it pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So we can actually just brute force a lot of these things and do them in really good ways, right? So we can, possibly, we can probably do it better than a lot of brain does. And this is the early 2020s. And this, I think, is the basic architecture for an AI. You've got the performance to do it, you've got the powerful algorithms to generate the abstractions, and you've got the underlying reinforcement that drives the whole thing. Now, 
I think a consequence of this is there'll be many groups in the early 2020s working on brain like a AGI architecture. It's artificial general intelligence. I think it's just a natural consequence of these things. If any of these groups has any significant success, they're going to be trying these things out on supercomputers pretty fast. It is inevitable, right? Um, and there should be exaflop supercomputers. So this is one with 18 zeros after it. And this is a conservative prediction. If you look at the supercomputer guys and what they're predicting and say a top 500 of org, they're predicting an exaflop by 2019. This is what I think is going to happen, right? We're already, um, we're already at uh, two petaflops. Um, 10 petaflops is coming in a year. And just, it's like six months after that is 20 petaflops. And IBM is already talking to, to groups about how to build the first exaflop machine. They're already discussing it with them based on their 20 petaflop machine, right? So this is, the idea that we're going to he be here by the early 2020s, that's actually arriving late, okay? So I think that this is very reasonable. This is very reasonable. I mean, if, if these things are true, then this is very reasonable. This is certainly very reasonable. That is very reasonable. This is a question mark. Will we figure out the algorithms to get really powerful? I don't know. I suspect we might. But we're not going to have a practical theory of friendly AI. Now, I've spoken to a bunch of people, including um, <coughs> Michael Vassar, the president of Singularity Institute. None of them that I've ever spoken to think that they will have a practical theory of friendly artificial intelligence in about 10 years' time. No way. When I talk to them, they say, well, we're kind of bang it's going to take longer than that. It's not going to be the 2020s before things start getting crazy. I'm arguing here, we are starting to understand. I'm not saying we understand, quote unquote, how the brain works, because there will be a lot of things we won't understand how the brain works. But we're under, when we look at the brain, we're actually getting an architecture for the system. We know all these different bits, how they connect up, the basic algorithms that are being used. And in some cases, quite explicitly, the algorithms are being used. So we, we actually have a blueprint for building an artificial general intelligence, and it's emerging quite quickly. And we're going to have the computer power to drive the thing. So that's my Halloween scenario that in the early 2020s, we are we're going to have the hardware, we're going to have the exaflop supercomputers, we're going to possibly have the deep belief network. This is the questionable bit. This is the bit that could ruin, make or ruin the whole thing. Are we going to get a lot more? This is a hot area at the moment, by the way. A lot of people going into this. We just had a, a big uh, workshop with all the top people in the world at the Gatsby unit. Um, a lot of things happening here. This, this is... This, is a, this, this list looks like it's going to be solved well before then. Um, so if this all takes off, we're going to have people with brain-like AI architectures plugging their systems into exaflop supercomputers, and we have no idea how to deal with consequences. And the, these, these systems to start with, maybe they're not that dangerous. Maybe they're not going to take over the world or do anything crazy. <coughs> they're starting to converge on the types of algorithms that, lead, that we really should be worried about. We don't know what they're going to do. And that, I will leave it there. You can't stop there. You've got us all on tangent. Yeah, so, so what do we do about this? You're going to take <laughs> the, the developer searches from number two to number five, to number yeah. six, is that right? What can you do about this? You can't slow down this sort of thing. I mean, this is a massive global effort, right? Um, it's going to make the research on friendly AI more attractive. I don't think you can really speed it up much. It's really hard. When I say that, you know, they're not going to develop this, this is not a criticism of their ability or their intent or anything like this. It's really, really hard. We have no idea how to solve this problem. It's, I don't know if we can really speed it up. Do is this AI is going to make it easier to solve? Or is it going to make it harder? Or is it... I don't know. Let's talk about this in pub. I mean, really, if, <laughs> if you have alternatives to my Halloween scenario, then, then, then tell the world we'll about it.